Good morning. This is Bill from Out of Europa, Naples on a ah, very lovely Naples Friday morning. Haven't made a video in a while. I apologize for that. It's been a mixture of things, all of them retarded. Uh, speaking of retarded, uh, I've come out, uh, well, I haven't come out. I haven't come out with anything. But in the comment section on a recent video, I have been called out for being what's called a global warming denier. Uh, which I don't think is entirely fair. I haven't denied anything. Uh, all I did was, uh, you know, poke a little fun at uh, little Greta Thunberg, who, frankly, is just another one of the girls who would have, uh, you know, ignored me in high school. And, and, you know, she looks like a cross between an aardvark and a munchkin. But um, it's not entirely fair to call me a global warming denier. In fact, today, in celebration of global warming, I've decided to review this 1997 Hummer H1. Uh, now, th it's not actually an H1, by the way. I think that only came out in like 98 or 9 when GM finally bought them and made it the H1. This is still a Hummer uh, something, whatever the hell it is, it doesn't matter. But for all intents and purposes, it's an H1. Now, it's not entirely fair to say that this thing is macho because I think it's the ultimate incarnation of what women want. You know, when I talk to my sister about what she's going to drive, what vehicle she's going to lease. I would never sell her one because she's the worst customer on the planet, maybe even intergalactic. But uh, So she has to go lease a new vehicle, and she's always looking at whatever big, giant, dumb thing is out there. And, and that's true of many, many women who I think are hypocrites of a sort because women are the first people to talk to you about how much they care about the earth, how much they want their children to live in a nice, happy place that looks like you know a mixture between Sweden and Star Trek. And yet, the minute that they are tasked with going out and finding a vehicle, they're gonna drive something like this, or you know certainly like one of those. And the bigger, the better. The more seats, the more engine. Uh, you know, I think it's a ride height thing they like to what, what do they quote unquote they, they like to sit up high they like to feel safe uh, which ironically of course you'd be much much safer in a sedan like uh, you know that s class or that e class over there but somehow these big giant tall dumb things give them a sense of security and as such they want to have them and how much more security could you have than this this 97 am general hummer h1 this is all the safety and security rolled up you could ever want into one package and uh, i think uh, it's something that they should have so today we're going to say it's ladies night tonight here at audio europa and we're going to review this car uh, as such so uh, anyway you can see it's a pretty wide thing uh, the hummer of course originated as a military vehicle it gained fame in uh, the original desert storm You'd see them all over CNN, running around in the desert. The generals of Desert Storm said this was a big part of what made their operation successful. Uh, I think another part of what made it successful is you had the entire might of the United States military coming down on Little Iraq, but uh, otherwise the Hummer contributed a great deal. Uh, you can see it's very wide. It's not just wide to be intimidated and dominated. It's wide because it will then fit into the ruts of a tank. So if you've got you know, a few tanks running down the road, they're of course digging ruts into the concrete or sand or whatever they're running on and if you're running Hummers behind them well these things can sit inside the same ruts and it's not a pain in the ass for them to get around so that was part of that uh, while we're here at the front you can also see the ground clearance this thing has is pretty phenomenal uh, a big part of that is because of the portal axles and you can see those very plainly here uh, where the axle shaft is coming in at the top of the wheel and then it spins the wheel using, uh, you know, gearing inside. The brakes are inboard. They're not out of the, uh, the wheels. So that way you get to have a lot more ground clearance. You also get a pretty incredible angle of attack. They've pushed the wheelbase to the outer edges of the vehicle. So if you see, and look at that, the front tire of this thing, the very front leading edge of the rubber is pretty much equal uh, with where the headlights are. So if it comes up against a big obstacle, that's so the tire will hit the obstacle first and give you the traction you need to get over it. So, you know, if the MX-5 in front of you picking up the kid after school is, uh, you know, not paying attention, letting little gaps form between herself and the 
minivan in front of her, well, you can just drive over the damn thing because you have the power and the ground clearance to do so. Uh, you also have, well, you know, the room inside thing, we're going to have to argue a little bit, but, uh, you know, it does have a tailgate in the back and you'll be able to stuff some trombones or uh, neighbor's children or Labrador retriever. You get all kinds of stuff in there, uh, even if the inside of this thing is not much bigger than like a Fiat Cinquecento. But anyway, you're going to feel safe, and that's the most important thing, obviously. Even if you're going to be polluting the planet a little bit, uh, we can sort of let that slide because safety is certainly more important. And why would you want to drive down the road in something that could tangle with another car and uh, not come away unscathed? I mean, if you're on some sort of a highway incident with this thing, you may not even notice. You know, the other car is going to be kind of a smoking pile of ruin behind you. Uh, you're going to feel some sort of a thump. You might think you ran over a speed bump or something, but you're going to carry on just fine. And again, that's the kind of safety that women crave. Uh, anyway, look at the ground clearance on that thing. It's absolutely astounding. Uh, here's another neat fact, and I know I'm kind of going back and forth between themes here, but the hell with it. It's, you know, Friday morning, everyone's happy, and I've already had some whiskey, so uh, it's a pretty good day. Uh, I hadn't slept for three days until last night, and then I got a pretty good night's sleep, so uh, there's one coming in. Man, we got birds around here. Uh, anyway... Um, I hadn't slept for three days. I did last night, so I feel a bit better, but I'm still mostly wonky, and I'm just going to claw my way through this thing. Uh, anyway, back to this other theme. So the crown prince of global warming awareness, Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger, may be atoning for being the first guy who brought this thing to the civilian market. I guess he saw one or a convoy of him going down the road while he was filming that ridiculously stupid kindergarten. Oh, I know. It was, I'm sure it was a fine movie. I just don't like children. But uh, he made some movie called Kindergarten Cop, and while they were filming it, a row of Humvees went down the road, and he said, oh, I've got to have one. So he went to AM General and lobbied them to make a civilian version, which they were already planning to do. I guess they figured it just didn't hurt having Arnold uh, be the guy who, uh, you know, made that uh, hit the public. So uh, the first two of them that they built for the civilian market, he bought. And uh, as a result, uh, the publicity was high. And, you know, they went on to run for quite a few number of years before failing miserably when gas prices got high. Uh, there were two versions available for the civilians. This one, the wagon version, they called it, just like a Vista Cruiser of some sort, and, uh, of course, a four-door pickup truck. Uh, the military had many more different versions, like a slant back and a true two-door pickup truck and some other stuff. But anyway, they, the consumers only got this. And then, of course, when GM bought them, they decided to capitalize on the name, and uh, they made uh, this ridiculous vehicle called the H2, which was based on a Bourbon or a Tahoe or something, uh, but had the look of a Hummer military vehicle. And of course, women love those as well. So God bless them. I know there's a few guys out there who drive this kind of thing, but, um, you know, it's just the same way that they also drive Volkswagen Beetles. You see them out there, but uh, we all know they're mostly for the ladies. Uh, it has an aluminum body for the most part, steel top, which is always a little disconcerting having two different kinds of metal coming together, but for the most part the body is aluminum and that helps with uh, corrosion. You know, they're not a big deal on these cars. They can, they're, they're pretty tough. Uh, they're powered by a big diesel engine, and uh, anyway, let's just get into this thing. So this one has this big uh, brush guard on it, which uh, every time I use it, the little steel cable that holds it sends a shard of steel about eight inches up my finger, which is lovely. Oh, God, this, this is not easy one-handed. I'm going to have to do all kinds of movements. But anyway, you let this thing down as such. Very, very nice. Then you get over to these things, release them as such. You know, it's a two minute walk to the other side of the hood. Love the uh, big intake there. It looks like a smokestack on a, you know, 18th century or 19th century locomotive. Oh my God, that's heavy to do. Oh my God, okay. And then in goes the prop rod. So there is a 6.5 liter Detroit diesel engine. Not extraordinarily horsepowery. I think it has like 170 or something. But of course it's got plenty of torque and uh, it's the appropriate engine to move this rather heavy 
machine down the road, a horsepower rating, I don't know, somewhere in the twos. You know, it would benefit from having four turbos and sort of a worked over diesel, which I think people are doing now. They're making these things. They're, they're old enough now. They're becoming resto modded, like 69 Camaros. So, uh, you know, if you want to do that, you could probably have this diesel upgraded to be even more ridiculous than it is now. Uh, but yeah, I love the big AC compressor on the top. You didn't see that in the military versions. They didn't care if those guys sweated to death. That wasn't a problem for them at all. The civilian ones, you got to have air conditioning. Uh, but anyway, there it is. And if you look, you'll notice the engine is pushed way back. It's high and uh, it's moved towards the passenger compartment. And of course, what that does is sort of centralize the uh, the, the center of gravity, it makes, you know, the thing much more stable under duress, which these things often were. All right, God help me, let's get this back down. Pull this back. I'm gonna kill myself doing this, I know I am. It's bad. Now it's just gonna slam. Oh my God. Okay, there it is, so let's get this back in. I understand there's some sort of <clears throat> you know, a little cultural war between Jeep and Hummer people, which is cute and adorable. It's probably not unlike the war between Camaro and Mustang, but um, I, don't know, I think comparing this thing to a Jeep is, well, I guess it's fair enough. They were both began as military vehicles. It's just this is slightly more intimidating than, uh, than a Willy. All right, so there we've got our little pokey things almost in. Oh, for the love of God, the hell with it. It could stay right there. As long as we get one in, we'll be all right. There it is. There, the shard up my finger. Jesus. Okay, is that enough? No, probably not. Oh, my God. Oh, forgive me. All right, this is ludicrous. I need a helper. I really honestly do. I'm just going to leave it like that. Anyway, there it is. Uh, this guy's put some extra lights on the front, which of course helps it make, um, you know, become a little bit more impressive and posing. By the way, you know, I go away for a couple of days. The last time I did, Marty bought this ridiculous town car, which uh, unbelievably is just sold. I, I can't, you know, two guys in the world wanted that, the one who bought it new and the one who bought it now. And now I come in and there's this thing. I'm not going to go into it now, but I mean, if you could choose a vehicle that's further away from anything that makes sense to me, even this makes more sense to me than that. Um, anyway, we'll be getting to that later. So uh, what else can I tell you before we hop in? These original Hummers had a tire inflation system, uh, which was kind of unique at the time, a cool feature. And it was, of course, military derived. So if you're chasing after the bad guys and they shoot out your tires, you could hit a couple buttons inside and it would shoot high pressure air into the tires to get them back up inflated again so you could go, you know, machine gun them to death. Uh, it's a great system, except it never worked. So uh, most of the time it got removed and it did also in this one when they put upgraded wheels on it. And uh, you're not going to miss that thing at all. Also got, well, it appears to be two fuel tanks. Um, don't quite understand that. I, I'm sure, eh, I don't know. I didn't look that up. So you're stuck. You also have a trailer hitch back there. Probably has a decent tow rating. Let's start inside the back. So here you go. The ladies are going to like this. There's plenty of room to go shopping, plenty of room to stuff a kid in there. You've got little hooks you can zip tie your wiener dog or toddler down. He's not going to go flying around. Uh, this one, brilliantly, the guy installed a couple of JL uh, audio woofers back there with the screens pointed in such a way that any cargo is immediately going to smush them, as has happened. Uh, but uh, it looks like it didn't incur all the way through into the woofer, so you still probably get some some sound out of them. Uh, you have these big humps here for the wheel wells. Those things slide open for ventilation. And uh, so a very useful, uh, you know, back cargo area for going to Whole Foods or J.C. Penney or wherever it is the ladies go today to get what they need, and uh, they're not going to be, you know, wanting for any room back there. Nice stuff. 
already under the hood with these kind of cheesy looking door handles. Okay, so there's one of the features with the Hummer that is, uh, to me, kind of a problem is room. So you've got this enormous giant 80 ton vehicle. Uh, it's a four seater inside and not just a four seater, uh, but seats that would look small in a in a Volkswagen Beetle. I mean, they're just absolutely tiny. And that's, of course, because this thing was not designed for passenger comfort. It was designed to carry a bunch of, you know, hapless soldiers to, you know, go become cannon fodder for somebody. Uh, but they, otherwise, it's all designed to be mechanically up high. So all of the running gear is lifted from underneath and uh, at the bottom as high as they can get it. So it runs right down the middle of the vehicle. Probably got transmissions under that thing. And uh, that, of course, incurs onto your passenger space. So when they made the civilian versions, they did what they could. You know, they made all that little wood grain and switches and, you know, stuff to try. And uh, it reminds me of the uh, the Cadillac Cimarron in a way. You know, they take the Chevy Cavalier and try to turn it into a Cadillac. And uh, it was just funny to see the little parts they bolted on the Chevy to make it rich. And uh, they've done the same with this Hummer. So uh, you do have some sort of uh, falling out. Uh, man, maybe the seat's just shrinking. Anyway, you got a couple of video screens back there. So you can play Black, Dog, Black Hawk Down for the kiddies or, uh, you know, whatever you want to do. And I suppose your Canadians, if they fit back here, they're going to be kind of chipper, uh, at least. Uh, you know, and funny enough, this thing was a Canadian vehicle. I didn't think the Canadians would go in for stuff like this, but they did. And uh, this was a, a very nice, wealthy Canadian fellow who owned this thing and imported it to Florida uh, a couple of years. We had this thing before. We had it about a year ago. This thing drove me insane, actually, because I took it out, I photographed it, I marketed it, I did a video on it which yeah, on an aside, Rob from the service department edited when our location switched to get rid of the phone number that people were calling him on it. And he made it from, you know, a 19 minute video into 45 seconds. It's just a quick brief thing about how creepy the tooth fairy is. So here I am redoing it. But anyway, we had it, we marketed it. We actually had a buyer for it, everything ready to go. And then this Canadian guy, uh, he, oh, sorry, you know, I never actually imported it. I just have a Canadian title. And it became a nightmare. For a month, we were scrambling around to different customs offices, trying to get it imported, trying to get a title for it. I finally got sick to death of trying, told the guy it couldn't be sold, put it in the back corner of the lot and forgot about it. And uh, here just about a week ago, the Canadian guy finally came and gave us a title. So uh, we pulled it up. Of course, it's a tough military thing. We, you know, it started right up. It had a battery disconnect. So I was surprised. We just turned that on. The thing came to life and, uh, you know, gave it a look over and here it is again. So this time we actually do have a proper title for this vehicle and can sell it if some, you know, nice family single mom out there is looking for a nice safe piece. So here you go. Look at that. We've got Hummer in the mirrors. Very, very nice stuff. Got all kinds of bolts and nuts everywhere. Uh, all kinds of labels. Lovely. Uh, this guy put on the most ridiculous looking decrepit Momo wheel. I mean, this would make sense on like a, uh, you know, some sort of salvage title S2000 with a suspension bridge wing on the back. And uh, here it is on a Hummer. I really feel like it should have something a little bit more macho, like a, you know, chain link wheel or barbed wire or something. But anyway, that's what it ended up with. Uh, you got, again, these two-tone leathery seats with, um, you know, all sorts of lifts and movements and such and little old spinny armrest things so you can set the height correctly. You've got levers and knobs everywhere, sort of a macho thing should, so your ladies are really going to enjoy that. And Anyway, let's just get in the damn thing and drive it. Got a boost gauge. Nice. I didn't think this was a turbo. Maybe it is. Boost gauge. Who knows? Alright, let's fire it up. Hilariously, it's got Ford keys to be, oh, for God's sake, I need three arms. Oh, God, okay, I've got to switch hands for a second. Hold on, bear with me. All right, there we go. All right, so there's the glow plugs. Let them turn off. Come on now. Oh, come on, this thing lit up every time perfectly. There we go. <laughs> All right, so you got a nice menacing growl 
out of there. I believe the uh, 97 saw some uh, sound deadening upgrades on the body. And uh, if that's true, and this thing is more sound deadened than prior models, don't get a prior model, because this thing's loud as hell. Uh, there really is nothing else like sitting in a Hummer. You have this strange, entirely vertical windshield running for hundreds of feet off to the right. Uh, you've got this big dashboard with strange angles. Uh, you've got an overhead thing that looks like an afterthought. Uh, you know, and like something from the cheapest RV. We got some speakers here. We got some sun visors with a vanity mirror. So, you know, Sergeant whatever is going to be able to check his makeup before, well, ever since Obama, you know, uh, before going into battle. Uh, you've got uh, weird looking wipers hanging down like on a Peterbilt. Uh, the split windshield is hilarious. Uh, here you got a fuel gauge. I think this thing gets pretty good mileage. You got your temp, you got your boost. So, I don't know. I'll find out if it's a turbo or not. I thought it wasn't, but why have a boost gauge? We'll see if it boosts. That'll make a difference. Uh, over here we got our volts, we got our oil pressure, you got this row of switches and lightings and turret guns and whatnot. Uh, you got your uh, headlight stuff there. Um, down here you've got, um, these are all your window controls, your rear defrost, uh, your air conditioning controls. Nice, get some AC going. Uh, you've got this big dumb looking Panasonic thing. Let's see if I can make it work. Probably not, nobody's tried this in a while. Oh, there we go. Look at this. It's coming out. This looks like something you'd find in a Honda Accord in the 90s uh, with a guy who's real proud of it. So anyway, we've got a DVD player there. I don't know if any of it works. We'll find out. But uh, I suppose you'd be able to uh, watch uh, behind the green door or whatever kind of strange movies make you happy when you're driving around. Of course, we're going to have chick flicks in this thing. I didn't even think about that. So it's going to be Thelma and Louise or... Um, Caligula, or whatever it is women like to watch. Oh, I can't wait to do that S55. That just makes a lot more sense to me. So driving a Hummer is twofold. Number one is it's kind of fun. I mean, any trip you make is basically an event. I mean, you don't feel like you're in anything remotely normal, obviously, because you're not. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's kind of fun. It's like... Yeah, when I drive my own little Z car that I'm playing with these days, it's fun, it's different, it, uh, you know, I enjoy it. And of course you get a similar sort of vibe from this. Uh, the, the problem is the people on the street kind of look at you like you're a giant asshole. Now, that's not going to matter if you're a <laughs> volume in here. See, there's all kinds of people looking. And I still, I don't understand why the men are all looking at this. They must think, oh, there's going to be some hot looking lady in that mom fan. Uh, but anyway, it, it, so it's an event. You're enjoying driving it around, even if you have to avoid narrow roads and basically parking anywhere. Uh, but at the same time, there's this stigma. The little Greta Thunbergs of the world are scowling at you saying, how dare you, how dare you. And honestly, because it's women driving this SUV craze, I don't entirely understand why they get to be um, uh, excluded from uh, the SUV derision. But they seem to be. Nobody's coming down on women for that except me. So, uh, you know, please help me out with that. Join in. Help me to save the earth. Uh, help me to convince women to start driving much more fuel efficient, reasonably sized things. Uh, but, um, Anyway, so they're really going to like this because they're safe. There's nobody that's going to be able to crash into them and hurt their snotty little kids. And, uh, you know, they're going to be able to fit all kinds of stuff in. Band practice won't be a problem uh, in the back as long as they don't need a lot of passengers. Because, again, it just has four tiny seats. Oh, this was a mistake. Let's see if we can make a U-turn here. But, you know, driving it, is it civilized? No. Does it feel ridiculous? Yes, pretty much. But uh, it still can be driven in such a way uh, that um, it's not entirely retarded. I mean, you could just navigate your way to, uh, you know, to school or work or uh, the shopping mall, the grocery store, you know, while feeling like you're in a res residue of, of normalcy. Uh, you know, the car does go into drive, it does steer, it does have air conditioning. Uh, but of course, other than that, it's just absolutely insane. 
It's just, it's just insane and ridiculous. So, anyway, look, I've tortured everybody with my 22 minutes or more of rambling about these things. My apologies. I'll try to come out with something. That's a good look at E30. Try to come out with something that makes more sense uh, next week and get back into the video swing of things. But again, I wanted a little celebration of uh, both women today and, uh, of course, uh, global warming deniability or whatever they call it. And, um, you know, I'll give up that for next week. So thank you for having a look. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you have any interest in this ridiculous giant thing, uh, call Marty, 239-298-8000. Uh, uh, or you can see it online at aenaples.com. And, you know, you know who you are. Thank you again, and we will, uh, we will see you with the next one. Take care.